Harry Cohn is considered by many to be the man who built Hollywood. The studio exec was the head of Columbia Pictures for over three decades, during which time he shaped the face of the industry for years to come. Many of Harry's contributions to the industry haven't been especially positive. For one thing, he's the man often credited with popularizing the idea of offering actresses roles in movies in exchange for sexual favors. Though Harry was an incredibly successful businessman, he was a much maligned figure in his industry. After years of mistreating everyone he came into contact with at his studio, Harry Cohn passed away in 1958. The executive died of a sudden heart attack. Though he was a hated figure in the industry, his funeral was apparently packed full of stars celebrating his death. Join Facts First as we explore how Harry Cohn built Hollywood and how everyone hated him for it. Harry Cohn was born July 23, 1891 in New York City. He was the middle child of his family and had four siblings. The family was not wealthy, with Harry's father barely managing to provide for them all as a tailor. The middle of five children, Harry often found himself forced to act aggressively to get any attention. The area he grew up in wasn't the greatest, and this was another thing that helped harden the young boy. Harry found he enjoyed making his way on the streets better than he enjoyed pursuing a formal education. He left school for good at the age of 14, at which point he tried out a variety of jobs before deciding he wanted to get into vaudeville. He teamed up with his friend Harry Ruby, and the two formed a vaudeville act in 1910. At the time, Harry was only 19. The act proved a success, and Harry subsequently also got into the business of publishing and promoting songs. It was during this time Harry became interested in short films, believing they would be a good method of song promotion. Soon after developing his initial interest in film, Harry Cohn found himself in Hollywood. His brother had experience there as a low-level producer at Universal Pictures. Harry teamed up with his brother and they left Universal in 1919 to form their own production company. The company eventually became known as Columbia Pictures. Harry became known throughout Hollywood for his aggressive business tactics early on, though they brought him plenty of success. The studio that would become known as Columbia started out making incredibly low-budget short films that weren't received very well critically, but they proved profitable. Once the profits started rolling in, the studio decided it was time to develop its very first feature film. That feature was named More to be Pitied than Scorned and was released in 1922. The film was a commercial success, proving to the world that the burgeoning studio would soon be a major contender in the industry. Throughout the early 20s, the studio made nearly a dozen feature films, and all of them proved commercially successful. Harry had started the studio alongside his brother Jack, and their lawyer friend, Joe Brandt. Though it was proving successful, Joe wasn't satisfied the way things were going and wanted out. In 1924, Joe sold his studio shares to Harry, leaving just the two Cone brothers. When Harry Cone secured those studio shares, he officially changed its name to Columbia Pictures. With this increased stake in the studio, Harry was even more determined to make sure it was going to become one of the biggest in Hollywood. Thanks to his ruthless business tactics, Harry soon made this a reality. Many credit Harry with shaping the Hollywood system we know today, though that's not especially a good thing. As soon as Harry got power, he used it for his own corrupt ends. One of the tactics Harry used to grow the fledgling Columbia Pictures was to buy up struggling studios and put all their old talent to work. He's also credited with introducing the world to a variety of stars who went on to become household names. Some of the many names that started out as newcomers with the help of roles from Harry Cohn include Rita Hayworth, James Stewart, and Gary Cooper. Despite the success they went on to receive, none of these figures had a particularly positive personal experience with the man. Of all the Hollywood figures that hated Harry Cohn, Rita Hayworth stands as the one that hated him more than most. Harry had a penchant for using his Hollywood clout to get sexual favors from actresses that worked for his studio and Rita Hayworth was one of the actresses he was most aggressive about pursuing. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First for more, and stick around for more about Harry Cohn. Although Columbia Pictures had first come into the Hollywood scene with the reputation of producing low-budget short films, it eventually became known as one of the biggest studios in the industry. According to many, the moment the studio entered into the big leagues was when it signed on director Frank Capra in 1928. The director was already a big deal in the industry, and he went on to bring a great deal of both critical and commercial success to the studio with films like That Certain Thing and The Younger Generation. 
In 1933, Capra secured the company's first nomination for Best Picture at the Oscars. The nomination came for the film Lady for a Day. To get Frank Capra, Harry had to give the director more creative freedom than the competing studios, which resulted in the director making better features. In 1934, Capra directed the film It Happened One Night. The film became Columbia Pictures' biggest success so far, earning five Academy Awards, two of which were the awards for Best Picture and Best Director. Frank went on to direct numerous other successful films for the studio, which only grew in prominence over the remaining 30s. Through the 1940s and into the 50s, Columbia Pictures continued to make hit films under Harry Cohn's infamously watchful eye. Harry was so protective of his studio, he was known to keep equipment all around his sets so he could listen in to what others were saying about him. If they said something bad, he would pop in on the intercom to surprise and punish them. In the 1950s, Columbia produced From Here to Eternity, The Bridge on the River Kwai, and On the Waterfront, all of which went on to win the Academy Award for Best Picture. Harry's tenure as head of the studio didn't last through the decade, though, as he passed away in 1958. Although Harry certainly changed the face of Hollywood during his three decades running Columbia, he was no hero. Harry was married twice during his life. His first marriage lasted from 1923 to 41, and his second marriage lasted from 1941 until his 1958 death. Though he was married for the majority of the time he was running Columbia, he was incredibly unfaithful to his wives. He was also a sexual predator who preyed upon actresses. Harry considered himself to be the dictator of Columbia, and that meant anything he said was the law of the land. This was true when it came to business decisions, but also when it came to romantically pursuing those under his employ. If you wanted to stay at Columbia, you had to do what Harry asked of you, even if that meant performing sexual favors. Some of the most infamous horror stories regarding Harry Cohn stem from his involvement with actress Rita Hayworth. It was Harry who signed the star during her early days, and he did so with the expectation that Rita would sleep with him. But it turns out Rita had other ideas. When it became apparent to Harry that Rita wasn't going to perform sexual favors in return for her contract, Harry did everything in his power to make her life a living hell. But Rita wasn't the only actress at Columbia that the studio executive harassed. There were a few stars who worked with Columbia during his tenure that had enough of their own clout to turn down his sexual advances. Among these stars are Katharine Hepburn and Joan Crawford. Sadly, the majority of women who showed up to audition for Harry were not so lucky. Before his death, Harry had become obsessed with actress Kim Novak. This obsession led to Harry putting a mob hit out on Kim's boyfriend, who just so happened to be Sammy Davis Jr. Several months after the incident, Harry Cohn ironically passed away himself. He died of a heart attack in February of 1958. He was 66 years old. Although the figure was justly maligned, his funeral was apparently very packed. Now it's time to hear from you. What part of Harry Cohn's story was the most surprising to you? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.